Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of a multi-layered perceptron, guys. So this is an interesting topic and it is a bit complex, you can say, guys, because the calculations are a bit complex. So I did not do any kind of calculations in this topic, but there are in our syllabus, it seems. So I'll be just cross-checking them and I'll be posting in our groups, guys. Okay, yes. so don't worry about it. Okay, so let us go through the conceptual understanding in this lecture. Okay, so there is no mathematical equations, big, big equations. Okay, don't worry. Yes, so multi-layer perceptron. So MLP, in short form, it is called as MLP. So in question papers, they wanted to ask, explain about MLP, guys. So please remember that it is nothing but multi-layer perceptron. Okay, yes. So let us continue. So a multi-layer perceptron, which is called as a MLP, is a class of a feedback feed forward artificial neural network. So basically this is a neural network guys. Okay. Yes. Okay. So basically I think everyone remembers we discussed about perceptron, right? Yes. So perceptron is a single unit. So if you combine these units to perform some task, okay, so that is nothing but our neural network or multi-layered perceptron. So multiple layers of perceptrons are placed. Got it? Yes. So in the multi-layer perceptron, these can be more than a one linear layer. So uh, as I told, there will not be a single layer. There will be multiple layers, one input layer, one output layer. In between, there can be thousands of layers, guys. So that is called as a multi-layered perceptron, okay, or neural network. Okay, so if we take the simple example of a three-layered network, the first layer will be the input layer, the last layer will be the output layer, the middle layer will be the hidden layer, guys. So in hidden layers, we can have some hundreds of layers, guys, okay? So based on your complexity of the problem, the layers will also increase. If you want more accurate values, you will be increasing those layers and the number of perceptrons in that layer, okay? So we feed input into the input layer and take the output from the output layer. So Basically, these hidden layers logic is a bit complex so that is the reason why we never think of the hidden layers okay yes so we can increase the number of hidden layers as much as we want to make the model complex based on our task so it is completely dependent on our task okay so if you want to draw a small diagram you can draw this as an example so basically here we are having some inputs the hidden layer the output so if you observe we are giving some input along with we are having the weights right the same way how we used to have in our single lay single neuron that is nothing but perceptron we are having here also but here i wrote only for a single input right so here you will be having w 1 2 w 1 3 right so again here also it should be there i think i missed this okay w 1 4 so all the combinations will be there guys okay and one more thing that you should remember is in perceptron we did not take any bias value like anything we did not plus or minus at the end but in multi-layered neural network or multi-layer perceptron we are guaranteed with a base base value guys bias value okay so bias bias okay so that value should also be included Okay, so your question will be, okay, so at that time, the formula looked like this, right? So xi wi plus, sorry, x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3. So now this bias also came in, how the formula will look like? So it is in simple way, it is nothing but w1, sorry, x1 w1, that's nothing but input here, we give i1. So i1 w11 plus i2 w21. So basically I gave it 2 1 and from this I gave 3 1. So okay, so 3 1 plus b. So at the end you will add bias also. Okay, and this all value, you will be passing it to the activation function. So basically we used to check, right? So whether if the value is greater than one to do, it will be one. So if it is less than one, it will be zero in that way. So based on that value, we are writing the activation function. So A of this whole value, you will be getting the value at H1. Okay, and remember one more thing, guys. In most of the situations, these values will range between zero and one only, guys. Okay, so inside values I'm talking. Okay, yes. So let us continue. So H1, so it will be in this way and A is nothing but your activation function. Here we will be using the sigmoid function guys because I told you right, so the multi-layer perceptrons are a bit complex. So that is the reason why we are going with a complex function. So at 0 it will be 0 and at 1 it will be 1 and it will look like a snake guys in simple words. Okay, yes. So if you want to write in terms of exponential, it looks like this. Okay, yes. Okay, so you got some idea, right? So basic idea, yes. So your question will be, what is the major reason for introducing this multi-layer perceptron when everything is done by perceptron? So if you recall, in one lecture, I discussed about linear separability, right? And I told XOR is the culprit there, right? So XOR is the one which is not following our linear separability because it's a zero, it's a zero 
its value is zero at zero and zero. Its value is zero at one, zero one and one. And in rest of the cases, it is one. So in this situation, we are left out with some odd shape, right? Which cannot be separated by a single line. So in these situations, you cannot draw a perceptron, guys. So for these kind of things, we need multi-layered neural network. Okay? Yes. So using a normal perceptron, we can fork. We can use linear classific classifications like. And an R, but XOR is a Boolean function which cannot be separated by using a perceptron. Okay, as it cannot be linearly separable, so that's the exact reason which I have written. So basically, in some books, they give the derivation of this whole thing, guys, like XOR, how to build an XOR. But I thought it's it's a bit complex, and I thought of skipping it, and I skipped it in my short notes. And most of you are asking that that is missing that topic is missing so i'll be adding it guys okay so don't worry about it i'll be posting it on our group clearly written okay yes so this is the final output you can say guys if you want to check it you can check it by giving z x and y so basically on 0 and 0 it should give 0 on 0 and 1 it should give 1 on 1 and 0 it should give 1 and 1 and 1 it should give 0 so you can cross check it you'll be getting the exact output guys okay so this is the xor guys okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea about the concept of perceptron right yes so if i try to solve the problem so the problem will look in this way guys so basically i'll be going through the terminology in the next lecture don't worry so the first step which we will be doing is nothing but we'll be doing the forward pass so you'll be passing your values to the next layer so slowly okay so then you'll be checking the error function so basically is there any loss calculation will be done and after that you'll be doing the backtracking so these are three concepts should be written to solve a single problem and it's a bit complex you can say there are some matrix multiplications and all those things so i thought it's a bit complex so i left it okay so that's the reason why i have written it clearly also from scratch it's a bit complex okay so anyway i'll be try, I'll try to solve it and i'll be sharing it guys don't worry okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea so in the next lecture let us go through the terminology which i just told you the three steps guys okay yes so that's nothing but that for training the model we'll be using those three steps okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching